this episode will be episode number 10 of At The Bar Podcast. Recording here live at World Bear UCF. Yeah, Jeff, it's going to be it's 10. 10. We're All at right. 10. We're actually more at 10, but this is going to be the, I'll 10. make this the 10th episode. As you just heard, Mr. Hollywood himself, Jeff. I'm here. Co-piloting, as always. Woo! I am Mike, as always. We have a very special, special guest, Jeff. We do. Our number one fan drove all the way from Tampa-ish. Tampa-ish. To, to be on the show. When uh, when you get called out for some shit talking, you know, two hours ain't so far away to come <laughs> drive up. So, <laughs> fellas, here I am. This is Preston from the Beer Chasers podcast, as we mention him every episode. I was going to say, I think his name's been mentioned in all ten of the or all nine of the other episodes. I, I kind of feel bad. It's like I'm hogging up all the airwaves, you know. Well, I that's all Jeff's the one talking and, about you, man crushing over you. Yeah. Harvey, man, what's up? That's one of the kitchen guys, Harvey, the man, the Harvey. myth, the legend. Preston, very nice to meet you. Very nice How you doing? What's going on, bud? So as Harvey's trying, about it. Harvey's trying some of the uh, some special beer. Joining us again for a little bit, Goose is making his triumphant return. I am. I, my introductory to Preston was he's Jeff's arch enemy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. how it's told. Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait. Goose has yeah, risen from the dead I have. to fly again. <laughs> no, it's it's like ten years old, mid movie with ten episodes. Yeah. You don't know how long Crazy, it's gonna right? last. That's a ten year old Anheuser Busch. Budweiser. Budweiser. I endorse it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Tastes like a barley wine. That's a gift from <laughs> Preston. <laughs> gift from Preston, yeah. We, yeah. we blind we blindfolded these guys like, oh, this is a, a barley wine. It's a, you know, it's this or that. I mean, yeah. Yeah, check out the beer chasers episode. Yeah, well, You'll I'll see put, us I'll looking like link, fools yeah. with our, yeah, with good, our right? blindfolds <laughs> on <laughs> trying it. Yeah. You better. He just changed his channel on. So, that might have been the longest intro we've ever done. I'm cool with it. Yeah. So, Preston, man, thanks for thanks for coming up. No problem, dude. Thanks for the invite, man. We're uh, we're here for the uh, the Landcraft Beer Festival yeah. weekend. The the land, the road to the land. The, the road to the land is what we're calling this. It's, it's, it's the big game bowl of craft beer for us. Yeah. <laughs> it starts here Thursday night. World of beer, hanging yeah. out with some good people, drinking first some good place. beers. We'll be drinking a, a lot of those tonight. Yeah. Yeah. So, I got a got a couple gifts for you guys. I don't know if you want to crack into these now. Or? Yeah. So uh, yeah, we can. You know, I want you to be the first topic. Ooh, let me Preston. Go get some right. glasses. Whoa. So I don't know if I need a glass. All right, so we're gonna. Okay. So first off, the absolute last bottle of my Poblano wit. Well, that's for you, Jeff. That's for you, my friend. I appreciate it. Thank you. I this appreciate that. The my secret's favorites. out. <laughs> cool. So Thank good. God. Yeah. Thank God. It's the last bottle I have. I wish I had a bomber of it, but I had to crack that one open. I had some company. I've been town. hiding that for weeks. Yeah. Really? He told me he's like he, uh, when we talked about the, the episode, I call him after. He's like, I actually have one more bottle left. I'm like, fuck. I genuinely now I have to hold it for like a month. I keep home it a run that one. I said that was the best one. It was <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Wow. And I just like uh, I just cooked actually. I made a chili a couple weeks ago with habanero sculpin mm -hmm. and ghostface killer, and I was like, what a great chili. Spice it up with those two, and I'm like, man, this is a great cooking beer, but. Then I drank it. I was like, never mind. I, I'm just gonna drink this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got one more bottle, so you can do as you please Perfect. with it. Um, Don't I, age it though, not for ten years. Ten years yeah. of age? Yeah, it won't work. It'll just taste like a chili pepper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I got a couple other things too, but I don't know if we crack into them now. Let's um, go for it, man. Let's get let's get all the surprises out of the way so we can enjoy them. Okay. As well, we record. So I know you guys are into weird beers. So yeah. I, yeah. I found something weird this for is you. Another this secret. Is the whale ball one. No, close. <laughs> close. <laughs> close. Yeah. Brought this bad boy up here tonight. All right. Let's see what we got here. What, what does it say, Jeff? Oh, wow. Spaghetti Western. Western. Spaghetti mm. Western coffee stout. All right. What's it made with? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Like I a boss. Made with I'm, What's trying, it made I'm like with? trying to read it around the mics here. Okay. It's a, chocolate it's a product of Italy. Stout brewed with coffee, cocoa nibs, and spaghetti. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So. Oh, this is a prairie beer. <laughs> yeah, it was prairie. It's a prairie collaboration. So Look at that. Goes well with everything. So And I it's 8.7%. It's, oh no, it's no spaghetti. whale balls, but... I think it's kind of in the we'll ballpark. We'll take a picture of that once. This we're done might be the weirdest beer, though. If you're it talking is, yeah. about a coffee chocolate spaghetti stout, <laughs> spaghetti western. Now, how's okay, Is it spaghetti as in like pasta? Or I think it's pasta as in. If, if I had sauce. to bet, be, being a brewer, they have mashed in with spaghetti noodles. I was gonna say, there's sure, no way yeah. the actual tomato sauce in there. No. Right? Well, I mean, That'd we had Mamma Mia's pizza beer. Mamma Mia. Worst beer ever. Pretty close. It, and we did it right, Seaford family. We put it in a wine glass and everything. Yeah. It, it was a beer so good it deserved a wine glass. That's but, what they said on the bottle. Uh, it was a beer so good it deserved to be in the toilet. But <laughs> was it that bad? It was it bad. Didn't, it wasn't that it bad. Didn't taste I mean, anything it like pizza. Like a like a liquid pizza. Very basil-y. Very yeah, like you know. Yeah, a lot of basil. I like basil though. 
Please. Basil in a cocktail? Go to Total Wine. They have them at Total Wine. Do they really? Yeah. Do Not all the time, but they come I in. I live yeah. by I've a Total Wine. There. All right, so, so I think the, the last of the surprises, per se. Spaghetti right, This Western. one's already unbelievable. So in the realm of weird, it's not a beer, but I brought something else for you guys. What is that? Uh, Straight from Vermont. Story. It's from Vermont, crafted porter pot liquor beer jelly. Uh, so. Ingredients, muddy nose brewing beer, water, hops, barley yeast, cane sugar, and citrus pectin. It is a, it doesn't say, but it looks like it's a, a porter, porter jelly. Porter jelly. Yeah. So All right. Money knows. So Mike and beer. I had the heady topper beer jelly, we which kind of tasted like uh, nail polish and jelly. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> um, gross. But this looked interesting. Uh, I got this in a what do you call it? Like one of those Christmas gift exchange. Happened to get it from Nate because Nate again brought all these down Shout from out to Nate. Uh, yeah. Nate Paul, what up? Uh, he brought all these down. I won it in the raffle, so I figured again share this with my my friends who like weird beer related items awesome, oh, yeah. i believe this is meant for cooking i mean i guess I you would, could put yes, it on yeah so being you guys have a kitchen here i figure we'll try it out yeah we'll try it out you know? for sure yeah. so well, yeah porter pot liquor i mean i'll jelly. try it on just a piece of toast i, I sure will that's too what we did. That's you got to get did. a flavor for it then yeah. you yeah. cook yeah. with yeah, it yeah. afterwards that's that's what i don't french onion we use porters with that oh that's true actually a french onion with that in there would be probably pretty good yeah, so just, uh, you know, you got till, you know, 11 o'clock to come up with something, you know, that it works with. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll, make, we'll make something. We'll yeah. make something with it for Harvey, sure. come back. <laughs> yeah, I got to work, man. I'll put, goose, I'll put Goose on it. Goose yeah. will figure it out. That's awesome, though, man. Appreciate it, man. For no sure. No worries, man. Thanks. Even though I knew about him. Thanks, uh, thanks for the invite you out. You knew about this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you said you I were know about it for, for a month. Week, yeah. For a month. I had to look you in the eyes the last couple of weeks and just hide it from you. This whole time. Thomas bought me a ghost face killer and did the same thing. Oh, that's he's, he's hiding it from me. I was just going to drink it just to get you back for last snow, but I'm a bigger man than that. You, don't even, <laughs> you didn't even like it. I, I drink it just to I have a maple your bacon face. coffee porter with your name on it. Okay. So. <laughs> I've also heard that about the last snow, though. So. <laughs> I had a last snow. I just got drunk and drank it. They're, they're, they're releasing again, aren't they? Real soon. It's, like, out. Very it's soon already now, out. So yeah, it's already I'll out. definitely pick up another bottle. I don't think it's on premise yet, but I believe it's off premise. And already. you haven't had it yet? Still mm-hmm. hasn't had it. It's it's Never. good, but I think, in my opinion, it falls along the lines of other funky Buddhas where it's you can tell it's a little artificial. Oh, it, it is, but it's not did a you super have, bad way. Did though. you have Death by Coconut this when it came out? No. My Oscar nope. Blues. Yes. I haven't had that either. No, no, I didn't have that. Sorry. Okay, so they're very. I mean, they're the same style. Mm-hmm. They are a clone of each other. But um, everybody said Last Snow was better. I thought Death by Coconut was right there with it, and I think just the name Last Snow made it better because yeah. it's the brand like we always it's been talk around about. Longer. So but, Death by Coconut's a brand new release. Yeah, I thought them. DBC was really, really good, and Oscar Blues is as good a brewery, if not better, than Funky Buddha. I yeah. mean, let's be yeah, real. They're, they're definitely probably, They're yeah. probably better, but Funky Buddha is regional, and I have to – I love them. So. Oscar Blues is a lot like Cigar City for me. We're like, you might not like the style of beer, but it's a, it's good, a good beer, beer for yeah. the style, yeah. regardless. Yeah, I've never yeah, had an Oscar Blues beer that was like, ugh, just get it out of here. I won't no. finish it. No cucumber saison, right? And 1050 <laughs> is like the best thing ever. Cucumber <laughs> saison. We could go. Yo. We should have a whole episode dedicated to that beer. Don't try that. Farts in the glass. If you like farts in the glass, you'll love it. I but uh, I made a fool out of myself. <laughs> I was at Cigar City uh, last weekend after yeah, Gasparilla. Please tell me you asked for the farts in the glass. I, <laughs> uh, I made a fool out of myself because I had heard rumor that they were discontinuing a couple of their cores, and I heard that it was Floridian or uh, White Cracker. Floridian. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's Mike's name. It's Florida uh, Cracker. Yeah. This is White Cracker. It was, it was uh, Florida <laughs> Cracker and then Hellas I heard they were getting rid of. Well, Hellas they are getting rid of, but I asked and they were like... They rebranded it. And yeah. they were like, yeah. oh, well, uh, Florida Cracker is actually our second best selling brand. We're actually expanding on that on that brand. I'm like, really? Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> and then they're like... Sorry. And I took the tour and they're like, they're like, oh, and our first beer for your tasting is, is Florida Cracker. And I'm like... Sweet. <laughs> Thanks. Nothing cool. Uh, no, we did get uh, we got vanilla Maduro on the tour, and then they finished it with Jose Marti, which I picked up a bomber That's of. That's solid. In the, yeah, in the uh, solid, tasting solid, room. Solid. So they had good beers on the tour. It just kicked off with Florida Cracker. Cool. But the new one they're releasing is um, flo- uh, it's just called Cigar City Lager. They didn't want yep. any confusion. Uh, Tampa, Tampa style Tampa, lager. Or Tampa yeah, whatever lager. that means. Yeah. But I wonder if, it, if it's really a rebranding of the, the recipe or is it just. It's, it I is a different a recipe. Tweaked. Okay. It's a, t- it's a tweaked recipe from yeah. what they said on the tour. I haven't tried it yet, but they, they said um, 
basically that Hellas was a confusing name because people thought it was a pepper beer. Yeah. As we're looking at a Poblano wit. Yeah. But, uh, people thought it was a pepper beer and people were imagining pepper flavor in it and saying, man, I can taste we're, the peppers in it. Yeah. Wow. And they were like, uh, it's just a Hellas lager. Kind of like we, yeah. what we did earlier. Like, oh, we kind of taste like a barley wine. Right. Well, they always <laughs> said, you know, they brew it because it's hotter than Hellas in here. That was the, right. the joke. You know, that's Well, originally thing. in that original tasting room where they're, or their first brew house, which also was the tasting room, they didn't have AC back when they started that brand. And you wanna, you wanna they put said, in the, in the cooler? Oh, yeah, sure. They said so that it was uh, 115 degrees one day, and they decided to brew something super sessionable, really light, so they made a Hellas lager, and mm-hmm. and then they, like, made a play on words. It's hotter than hell is yeah, with yeah, Hellas yeah, yeah. lager. So then everybody thought it was a pepper beer, and well, now it doesn't sell. So I'm they hearing, are rebranding. This isn't the topic, but I heard, I'm hearing mixed reviews on the on the, on the new Tampa-style lager. Yeah, We're not even reading. Like crazy. I heard it's very mixed. It's Cigar City. It's selling like crazy, but it's well, yeah. Cigar City. So, Which is surprising that Florida Cracker, this is also not the topic, but Florida Crackers are second best selling. Highlight, I would assume, would be the easy number one. Yeah, I would think so. But I would It was s- always Highlight Maduro. Now that's it's Highlight. That's what I would thought. Now it's Highlight Cracker Maduro. That's, that's unfortunate. Have you I had love, Florida I, Cracker lately? I love Maduro Brown. Oh, I love it. Cracker, a lot. cracker is a. It's decent. Sessionable it tastes different. beer. I just, it's not Belgian y. And it's not American, and mm-hmm. they call it a Belgian style white wheat, mm-hmm. but it's not. What do you think, Goose? You're quiet over here. Oh, I've never actually tried it. Which one? Uh, cracker. The, yeah, the cracker. The cracker. That's all right. Maduro's their <laughs> yeah, Maduro's, Maduro's their best, in yeah. my opinion. But I'm yeah. a malt guy. Yeah. Uh, High Lie is obviously their highest rated. I think yeah. I got a 97. I don't know rating. the word. Uh, it's good for the style. It, 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 to me, it tastes like sharper. I don't. I don't. I don't know the word to describe it. it just it has a lot more like pop but not in a good way like it's almost a little too it's not it's it's not east coast for an east coast ipa it's not citrus hop, oh, so i was talking about uh, cracker oh cracker. you're talking about cracker yeah. okay i was like i thought you were talking about highlight oh no highlight, highlight yeah, is very sharp oh, yeah, to me sure, and it's yeah. super hoppy no, florida cracker tastes a lot different to me now before it used to taste a little more mellow to me like it, yeah. it had a little hint of that orange and a little bit of that kind of uh chamomile vanilla that like a belgian what's gonna have but now i get it tastes like it's sharp I don't, it's I, almost it's uh a little bit, the best word i can describe it probably tweaked it the it's, recipe. it's very blue moony now. Yeah. It's very I, I, I citrus forward, light, chuggable. Have you guys ever heard of Psycho Stick, the band? No. no. Of course I have. You, you never know. Beer is good. Beer is good. Beer is good and stuff. No. That's never mind. I tried to plug you, dude, and All right, yeah, it didn't well, fail. It's okay. He gave, he gave the band uh, Maduro Brown. Oh, nice. They came in the town. We, we interviewed Solid have them, Style. Have, have a, I like it. It's, uh, it's, 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 called, it's a beer song. I mean, it's, yeah, it's the beer song. It's the beer song. <laughs> Yeah, you guys, you guys real, would recognize is, is, is it. If real big, big fish. Real, I think real, I'll have myself a yeah, beer. Is yeah, the beer song? Real, real big fish beer. Ooh. That's that's the beer song. That's the song Ooh. that every time I hear. All right, it, gentlemen. I have to well, it's been lovely. I yeah. gotta. Uh, you don't like real big you know, fish? No, oh, so I got. love real big, but if it's not going, he's very into not, yeah. Not much so anyway, the topic of the show of this, of this section here yeah. is Preston. How long? Preston's here visiting, right? You're a beard podcaster like us. I do. Right. But you're I dabble. In, I dabble You're, you're in the, arguably the capital of craft beer in Florida. It's true. Tampa, Tampa Bay, uh, I guess essentially Pinellas County. I mean, Pinellas right. County is the, really the Bay, The Bay, Tampa Bay area yeah. is, is a hot spot. Yeah. And this is a question I've been wanting to ask Jeff for a while. And when you told me you were going to come up, I saved it. Okay. For you two, and Goose, you can feel free to, to count, come in on it. All right. What has podcasting been like for you three? Specifically, you know, your expectations going in, you know, what it's been like and how, how have your opinion or first impressions have changed now that we're 10 episodes in for Jeff and press has been, you're, 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 you're in the seventies. I was really 72 today. Yeah. You did 70. So this, you're in the mid seventies and goose, you've been, you've dabbled, you've yeah, been on, dabbled. this is now your second episode. So I want to know what you guys have thought about podcasting as a whole. And I know you have a lot to talk about. I do. So I'm going to go with goose first. See, yeah. I enjoy it. I, someone who's coming in, just really starting to get into the world of craft beer, I'm learning a lot, and that's yeah. what I wanted. Like, I'm learning all about all these different beers and all this stuff, which is what I like. Uh-huh. I love that. I love having that perspective yeah. on a show. That's why, for my show, I always wanted to have a second. I didn't want it just to be, be about me. I always wanted to kind of have a pro and a Joe. That's what I called it. You know, I always wanted to have both perspectives. I think it. I'm the Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, listen. You, you sell yourself so. short, man. No, yeah, you do. You really? Well, I'm sitting over here. Yeah, I've never tried that. Yeah, I've never, no, I've I've never, never tried, tried that. No, nope, never tried that. So what? What? I mean, you know, for, you're, you're taking more of a, of a learning aspect of you know sitting on, listening to us, you know, gabble about God knows what, you know, and you're learning from it. Well, I mean, what you know, what's what's it like sitting behind or in front of a mic? 
and like hearing your voice and like having people to hear what you have to say? I don't think people take my opinion very wisely because I really <laughs> don't know what I'm saying. Hopefully, <laughs> but I don't really. You're yeah, like, I mean, are, you, are you having a? I mean, is this? I mean, you said it's fun, right? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I love doing this. So what's what are you learning out of it? I'm learning more and more about craft beers every day, like how different beers are brewed and everything. Okay. And that's stuff I never knew. Okay, obviously. so more like the brewing technique. Yeah, like you learn what to pick up on. Mm-hmm. You should try beer school. I should. Don't do that. We're sending him through soon. <laughs> He'll go through eventually. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. For me, I mean, it's so I, I always I get my beer news through Twitter or through the industry, and mm-hmm. I stay up to date with it. But there's always things that I feel like I'm behind on, uh-huh. and when you work at a place like this where you run into customers who know as much or more than you about beer every single day, right. it's it's a fun opportunity to connect with those people, but it's also great to kind of feel like I'm imparting knowledge again. Cause like I haven't, I, I've never taught beer school, surprisingly, mm-hmm. even though I've been with the company for two years and I'm the yeah. GM, I've never taught beer school. I've attended beer school and I've facilitated and watched beer schools happen to make sure that they're going well. But, um, you know, it, it's it's cool that I feel like I'm meeting new people. I would have never met Preston if I wasn't doing this. Yeah. Um, you know, all our guests are grateful to be on it. And we have a, a crazy wide reach already that I was surprised about. And it was cool that, like, we had somebody from from Washington and Texas and where North else? Carolina. We had North Carolina yeah, yeah. listening to us. And I'm like, I, I didn't expect that. And I, I think it's cool that there are people out there that want to hear us talk. And yeah something stupid about you know craft beer but that shows kind of how well the industry is being take is taking root in in the country right and the world but uh-huh. um i mean we're opening a world of beer in freaking china like craft beer is going everywhere yeah and it's it's insane to me that what we think of as craft from other countries especially world of beer where we have stuff from all over the world it, it, it i kind of got that perspective through this that like this is normal everywhere uh-huh. and your perspective changes because we're in we're in the southeast so like what we view as super rare is somebody's every day yeah and oh, then oh yeah, and now when oh you yeah. start talking about it and you get into talking with david about beer trading and stuff you're like oh wow man it's it's kind of crazy how normal this is now yeah. how big this industry's gotten and how how people want to listen and hear about it and learn about it mm-hmm. to your to your point there i have a friend from uh, belgium i'll call him a friend he, I, i've met him online through a, a group malevolent creation that i love and just mm-hmm. he's a super fan from over there and he always asked me, he's in a beer, he's brewed a little bit, and he says, he said, do you guys have Stella over there? He said, do you like Stella? I'm like, it's pretty good. It's like, it's better than like a Budweiser over here, but it's still kind of like mid-shelf. He's like, he's like, dude, that's the equivalent of like Bush Light. He's like, over here, that's Bush Light. He's yeah. like, that's wife, well, yeah, he's like, that's wife beater beer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Stella's trying to rebrand their whole thing because it's just, you drink Stella, you're going to meet your wife. But over, <laughs> but over yeah. here, it's like, you know, it's not like top shelf, but it's definitely not the four ninety nine six pack. It's, you right. know, it's a nine ninety nine six pack. It's you know, I was in Spain for a while, a few years back, and all they drink is Heineken. It's, it's Heineken so weird, everywhere. Man. It's so weird. I'm like, I don't get that. So, I mean, what going into, Jeff, we're now 10 episodes, and like I said, what, what kind of, you can be honest, what kind of thoughts did you have going in when we started this, this show again? <laughs> well, my, my perspective changed where originally when you, you approached me about doing this, I thought exactly like Preston said, like, pro and joe i was going to be like comic relief and just have fun with it and i'm still having fun with it but i never had expectations of what i'm saying being taken seriously right um so until preston chimes in saying (laughs) what are you talking about then (laughs) then i start getting called out and i'm like you know what no i do know what i'm talking about (laughs) jeff you're wrong gosh darn it no (laughs) but uh honestly i didn't go into it nervous um i probably would have been if we started with video (laughs) 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 but i didn't go into it nervous but the uh I, I feel a lot more comfortable doing it now, and it's. I, I just think it's cool. I want to see it grow as, as much as it can, and yeah. I, I feel, I feel like we make craft beer approachable on a very low I can level. Agree with that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not like wine where it's hard to break into, mm-hmm. where you almost have this air of like you need to know what you're talking about or else you can't talk about it. Right. Like, we have people on the show who like like Goose or said, self proclaimed beginner. Everyday people. You know? Yeah. Like he doesn't know he he's, hasn't had white you know Florida cracker. Yeah. But like, I'm gonna grab one. <laughs> but yeah, like, grab one no, that's not a bad thing. But like, I'm saying, you know, we make craft beer approachable on an easy way. It's free. You can listen to us talk yep. about it, and and if it sparks your interest, it sparks your interest. I have a buddy who doesn't like craft beer at all. He lives over in Tampa, and he's like, hey man, what's the what's the podcast you're on? I want to listen to it, you know. And he started listening to it. Yeah, so, cool. Um, I, I think it's cool. I I think it really 
I'm sure it exists for wine too, and I'm sure it exists for everything, but it just, I think it makes what we're doing approachable and easy and just low pressure. So, so you're having a good time? I'm having a great time. You enjoy these every week? I do. Yeah. Generally? Now, when I, when I like I, when we shoot like nine episodes in a day. Yeah. <laughs> like, like now, when, when I've been, I edit the episodes, and I can tell if you were listening to episode one to, you know, the last one we did, which I couldn't even tell you the topic was. Oh, it was the hard sodas. Yeah, like, Breckenridge. I can Man, tell. Man, did I rant on that one? I can tell a difference, not in just how you talk, but in the way you deliver it. Of right. of, in episode one, you're a little bit more more hesitant, a little bit more short answer to where now you're a little bit more suave about it. To Rico. where like, you, you're, more get com- a Rico suave. you're more suave. comfortable. You're more comfortable with it. Like you're more descriptive. You're more. You're willing to open yourself up. Just a little more confident with what confident, I'm saying, I think. And you're more comfortable, you know, voicing, you know, episode one, you're like, oh, I don't want to know what people think. Like, oh, I don't want to be like, and to an extent, you're kind of like that now, but we just fuck with you about it. <laughs> and that's and that's how I started on the beer chase was the same way. You know, I looked at it as John at the time was the pro. Right. You know, he taught me a lot about how to brew. And I've been in the craft beer-ish. You know, I, I had my certain styles, but I did not feel comfortable going over, like, the smell, the taste, the appearance at all so john would do the whole like five scale system and i would just do on a scale of one to ten yeah and you know i don't know what episode it switched over it was like you know i've had enough of this style to where i feel comfortable giving it right and you know and, and over the last two years and because of the show i think it's really one of the benefits i've gotten out of it it's forced me to go drink beers i might not have and a lot of times i buy beers for the show that i probably wouldn't have gone out and bought oh you, know, who you tell my, my <laughs> wife pro- my pro- wife probably you know doesn't like that you know yeah. i spend more money on beer well, i mean than I yeah would i don't have, know if you would have bought a spaghetti beer if you were yeah. doing a podcast <laughs> hey, that's that a seven dollar beer if I was <laughs> but uh you know, I, I went out and bought beers that I never would have just for the fact that I was going to review it on the show. Right. And in doing that, I learned a lot about different beers, you know, that I probably wouldn't have. I would have said, you know, I know I kind of like lagers. I kind of like some IPAs, and I like, you know, some of these, so I'm going to stick with these. And, you know, I hated stouts two years ago, but because of the show, I'm like, well, you know what? It's, it's something people drink. It's something people there, – there's great, big, rare beers out there that are stouts. Let me start trying these. And over time, I learned to like them. Yeah. yeah. That's how I was with IPAs, too. I hated yeah. IPAs. And when I went through beer school, we tried a handful of different styles, and I kind of just branched out from there. And, uh, like, on my way back from Tampa, we stopped at uh, Two Henry's, and their bomber selection wasn't much. They had, like, their mainstream bombers, but they had Hurricane Number no. 8 Icebox. And it's a German freeze distilled icebox. Who's doing those in America? Yeah, not yeah. many. No one. So I'm like, I'll pick it up. I don't really like icebox, but and I don't know what I'm gonna do with a 14% bomber. But <laughs> sure, I'm gonna I'm gonna drink it someday. Yeah, and, yeah. and now I just got an icebox chilling. And it's just like, I, would I pick up an icebox a year ago or two years ago? Probably not. Yeah. You know. But now I'm just like, there's just the rarity of it that no one's really brewing them, and and I, I'm interested in it. And it's a Florida local brewery. I'm like, I, I might as well try it. And so I, yeah. So I thought going into this, you know, I I'd watched a couple beer review shows, you know, guys like Craig Tube who'd been doing it a little while, and Beer Geek Nation. I watched a couple of his uh, Better Beer Authority, you know. I watched some of those guys, and I was just, you know, they're good, and a lot of their production values are pretty good. But like, I didn't like the way they delivered their content, and that was, you know, I wanted to kind of get more into the meat and potatoes of the beer and talk about the five styles. So to me, it was like, dude, we're gonna come into this market, we're gonna do this so well that everybody's just gonna jump on board and watch it, and you know, crickets. You know, we didn't get a lot of response, you know, and and, and that's real frustrating. And, you know, we've talked about this before, me and Mike, you know, to an extent. It's like hours what what can you do to build that, you know, when you don't have a revenue stream coming in? And, you know, it's It's a hobby. It's it's, an expensive hobby. It's hard to justify to continue to keep doing it because whether you realize it or not, it takes a lot of time for me to edit an episode as simple as it is. You know, it's like four or five hours sometimes. And then there's still, you know, setting up the stuff with the breweries and getting down there and setting up and meeting people, mingling and, you know, getting out there and trying to uh, expand. It's it's not. It takes a lot of time. And, you know, where I get with it today, it's like I, I talk with Mike every week. It's like, oh, I'm not doing this anymore. Then the next week's like, I got these awesome ideas for five more things I want to do, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me and, right and now. That's with me too. It, it kind of combines two of my favorite hobbies. Um, I love videoing and I love editing video and I love beer and talking about beer. So it was kind of an opportunity to do two at the same time. And, you know, I, I gave myself, I said, you know, I'm going to give it 50 episodes. And after, at the end of 50 episodes, I'm still not having fun. I haven't really built an audience yet. I don't think I'm going to continue doing it. And we got to 50. And, you know, I had a couple of really good videos where. I think, our, I, was, our, I think I was a part of your 50th. Our 50th episode was a Belgian quad blind taste test. Yeah. Oh, that's and cool. And that video today is at like 2,000 hits. Yeah. Which a, is a, a lot. A year which later. Is, for, for us is a lot. You know, and generally. You know, Generally, I hit about 50 or 60 on most episodes. Right, me too. And, you know, I hit about 10% of our audience, which, you know, from my understanding, 
and I don't know if it works differently in radio or podcasting, but you know, in the television world, if you can hit 10% of your audience that's available to watch, you can, you can kind, of, uh, kind of consider that like a success. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I, I don't know what I've learned differently. I, I think to, to piggyback off what you said was the community, just really learning about this beer community and how, how really cool most of them are. I mean, you've got your Bud Light bros who are out yeah. there throwing fights and throwing fists, but for the most part, the craft crew is about love and sharing, and it is yeah. about... You know, hey, I had this really great beer. Did you have you had this guy over here, man? If you like this beer, you really gotta try it. Oh my God, there's these really cool people over there, and they're so nice. And you know, that's really what surprised me most about coming into just not knowing it and podcasting and ever doing it was just how cool this community really is. Yeah, and and, and to go off that as well is that a lot of people don't understand the amount of work that goes into just creating a half hour show that we're not charging you for. You know, it's it may not be your style, but you know, if you like crap, you're gonna listen to it. So yeah. From a creator standpoint, if I make if I do an hour episode, I'm spending it's it's gonna take me six times more time to edit that because I'm going through an hour. So every epi- every hour episode, I listen to it without doing anything, and then I listen to it a second time, and I add pic- I make dots for pic- I add the pictures or drop video or whatever, and then I listen to it a third time and tweak the audio. So in an hour an episode, an hour episode is taking me six hours yeah. to edit right. on top of. You know, planning it, bringing the equipment, buying equipment, yeah. uploading it, sending it out to Reddit, YouTube, like pushing it out. So one episode can easily take us eight hours yeah. from start to finish. And that, that's surprising to me, too. One thing I want to mention is that, in my opinion, I've got a flip cam. I don't have any mics, you know, so right. I, I may do with what I have. But in my opinion was our content is going to be so good that people are going to overlook that. And that's what Absolutely. surprised me is, is they're not. They don't overlook it. Well, they, just, they, they do complain about the audio problems. They will complain when the lighting's not right. It's just tough, man. It's tough yeah. because you want to put out a good you want to put out a good show, but at the same time, like we're doing this for free. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what I mean? Like everything. I mean, so far it's been you, but it's it's you know, it's all it's all for free. Yeah. It's all the editing, all the everything that goes into putting out a show is for free. And you know, how do you advertise it or get it out there other than what's free? Yep. what's available to you social media or putting it up on youtube and it's like people have to find it and yeah that's the hardest know, thing if i was not if i was not in the beer community would i be searching beer podcast no or would i stumble not. upon it you know yeah. if i just was a craft beer lover and we talked about this to me and mike um you have to realize it too. You look at your potential audience. Just when you do anything, you go into a market to open a business. You're talking about a yep. podcast. Like, what's your audience or what's your market? And right now we have okay, craft beer lovers is one circle, and then you're like, okay, craft beer lovers who are going to listen to people talk about it, people who are going to do you know podcast versus video, people who have time who will come back and watch it every week. Right. You know, so you start segmenting it smaller and smaller and smaller, and like you don't have like a super large audience. No, not really. All the time, you know. So that's why sometimes like, well, you know, I, I could get upset about it. But you look at Beer Geek Nation, you know, Hills will trickle up to like 10,000, but his first weeks are, you know, 1,000. You know, they're not doing incredible numbers. And then you right. kind of have to take a look at it, and that's where I always come back to is, why am I doing this? What's the purpose? Am I trying to drive revenue? Yeah. Am I trying to... Again, you know, am I trying to make money? Am I trying to build an audience? Like, what, what's the intent it's, of me doing it's, this? It's a balance between, I mean, you work, Preston. You work. You have a job. You have a family. You have a house. I have a, a job. You know, I don't have a family. I have bills. And, like, so it's a balance of, you know, you want the show to be great because it's your child in a sense. But you have only a certain amount of income coming in after all your bills are paid. And then equipment to, like, advertise this stuff is yeah. not necessarily cheap. So it's whatever extra money we have to spend goes to the show and like it's it's a, it's a double edged sort of finding the money to, to dedicate to the show and then branching out and then like upgrading the show and yeah. then like traveling to these breweries and to these places and then buying the beer a lot of the time when we go there you know very few places comp the alcohol very very rarely I mean and that's not necessarily uh, we're not I'm not I'm not looking for that I'm either. not complaining yeah. about it but a lot of people don't understand that you know, for us to give you a 45-minute show, a 10-minute show, it, it, there's a lot of work. And it's the hardest thing going into, which I underestimate, was gaining that audience. Yeah. That's the hardest thing for me, podcasting, because I've essentially exhausted my avenues. Yeah. Not my friends, you know, World of Beer. I got the Facebook group, social media groups. Like, I have... have for me personally, as an individual, have reached my max. Yeah, I think we're both doing the right things. We we go out and network, and not just specifically for networking. I mean, but right. it's the right thing to do. You go out, you find another show. You guys both share the content. You both right. share resources. And that's well. And the and the thing is, like we said earlier, with the beer community being the way that it is, like 
I love that the beer community wants to share any information they have with somebody else. They, mm-hmm. they don't want to keep it to themselves. So if, if you do have a, a person who's a viewer or, or a listener, like in our case, a listener, but they, and have you heard about, you know, this podcast, you should listen to it. It's awesome because that's the one thing when, when I started at world of beer, you go through beer school, you have a base knowledge of, of styles and a handful of beers at your mm-hmm. go-to beers. But like our customers wanted to teach us as much as we wanted to teach them. So you know, if you're a new person working in the beer industry, it's not like, oh my God, I can't believe you don't know that. It's like, right. oh really? You haven't, let me show you the proper way to pour a Hefeweizen or let, you right. haven't tried this beer here, try a sample of it, you know, take a, take a shot out of mine. They want to help you. So as far as word of mouth advertising goes, it's huge for, for what we're trying to do. Right. Where if you have listeners, they're going to tell their friends to listen as well. And you know, it'll grow organically, but it takes a lot of time. It takes and, a lot of time. And you, and you just have to constantly put out good content. If the show starts to go downhill, you lose everybody. Yeah. yeah. And where I'm at now, like I think I'm at the level where for, for the beer chasers, I'm putting on the content that I've wanted to. There's some, some certain episodes I wanted to film. I wanted to do one or two more cooking with beer episodes. Because I wasn't in the stouts when I first started the show, I did. I'm, I literally have like 10 stout episodes filmed. I'm just like, I'm going crazy with it. I'm trying all the different ones. So yeah. I wanted to do that. Um, I love the blind taste test, and I do the homebrewing stuff. But I'm getting to the point where I've pretty much filmed all the content I want to film. And, you know, we'll get to the finish line and see where it's at, if I'm going to keep doing it or not. Right. I'll talk with Mike maybe about just being an extension of At The Bar Podcast and being, like, the homebrew extension of his brand, you know. And that's, so. a, that's something we've talked about, you know, a while ago is you know, to stay determined is extremely difficult. To keep your head up, to keep going, to keep pushing through. And, you know, when you're, you're getting – the episode's been out a week and there's 10 views, you know. And that's really, like, that – it, it hurts, you know. It's it's depressing. It, it brings you down. You know, and, and five of them are me watching it. Five yeah, times. over and over again. <laughs> the, the, yeah, what, the guy who edited, it, like, all right, did it upload right? Did it upload right? What kills me the most, you, know, is you have like you know your Facebook group, right? Yeah. So you, I have like you know whatever four hundred people on Facebook who like the page, and I'll post it on Facebook, and you'll get like twenty two likes, but then there's three views. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like. It's cool. The like is helping me because it does help the audience and kind of more people their see it. See what they liked, but. Yeah check it out come listen to it yeah. you know and, and comment and let me know what you like and what you didn't like yeah. and because at the end of the day i don't want to just talk to myself you know I, I do that enough yeah but i mean i think we both can agree that pod, beer podcasting even though we're not necessarily relevant has opened a lot of doors for us to try different things yes to like for sure i mean we had a westie like if i was just a regular guy drinking crap beer there i would have never got my hands on a westie yeah. or a heady topper or a pliny like us saying that we do a podcast opens up doors that I don't want to take advantage of, but I'm not necessarily saying no. Like, oh, you want to send me beer? You want to pay me to come to your bar and talk? Like, hell yeah. Like, I'll do that any day of the week. Yeah. So, like, just, it's, gratifi- it's gratifying. Yeah, it's gratifying. It's, it's saying, hey, we appreciate the work you've put in. Yeah. You know? And, like, yeah. we got, we were, we were invited to the Deland Craft Beer Festival. Like, yeah. just because we have a show that talks about craft beer and does homebrewing, like, that is giving us an opportunity to have, like, try different breweries, to try beers that they haven't necessarily released yet, mm-hmm. that they're previewing out. Or, like, last year we had the peach pumpkin beer yeah, from Hourglass and a couple other, you know, pumpkin mocked Pumpkin peach ale? Yeah, they yeah, yeah. mocked it from the Anheuser-Busch commercial. That's not commercial. brewed the hard way, though. That's not <laughs> beachwood aged. No, no like, not at all. That's something that I think the average person may not get their hands on. Yeah. And, like, just saying we have a podcast, a, a podcast is, like, not, it's, it's – a lot less than radio. Yeah. It's like we have our own radio show. It's like, oh, we just have a podcast. Just We get in front of a ca- camera and just talk. Yeah, I always feel weird approaching people, but like, yeah, I'm with this show. You know, it's like. Have you heard of us? No. no. And then like, you're like, oh, shit. Like, my videos only have 20 views. Like, Give it time, What though. makes it worth their time to yeah. have us come to their brewery? But it's podcasts, free exposure. Podcasts you know? are going to be bigger. It's, it's growing. They're gonna be it's going to be bigger than, and then radio eventually. Yeah, radio yeah, already died. We well, got custom you content, have, and you can you listen to it whenever you want to. It's and, the new podcasting. is the new well, radio. Well, yeah, you have XM now, but, like, even XM has podcast shows on it. Yeah. Like, it's podcast is the yeah. future. Everybody's yeah. doing it. Because yeah. everybody can do it, there's so much content. And that's kind it's of saturated. the problem. It's yeah. very saturated. It's like, and then same thing with Facebook. You get a like, but then it goes to a billion other people who have a billion likes on their – everything's on their news feed filtering constantly. And it's like – I mean, how many people are getting those little, like, 30-second clips on how to cook badass food on their Facebook, I right? love them. All, all BuzzFeed. Yeah. Did, any, did anybody yeah. like any of them, or do they just no. show up on your news feed? I just see it. I see it. Right? I watch and, it. Yeah, and we watch them. But, oh, yeah, yeah. but the, it's so <laughs> saturated like because yeah. that's the kind of – that pops up on all of our thing, and none of us have liked it. Yeah. Right. So our podcast is popping up on a handful of people's news feeds, but it's popping up intermittently with all of the other things that are yeah. popping up. 
So like, yeah, you might get a billion likes, but how many people are actually watching that content? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's such a saturated, yeah. and that's the thing with social media, all of it's saturated now. Yeah. And it's, what's the next way to get your news out there? Yeah. Gentlemen, I'm getting thirsty. Me too. Let's get some. What do you want to do? Glasses. Uh, yeah. So I, know, I know we got a cooler full of beer here. I brought. There's there's stuff for the land. Well, I don't Jeff, know how you want to. Jeff wanna. is getting glasses, so we'll wait till he comes back. But when, since he's gone, I mean, Preston, would you change what you've done in terms of starting the beer chasers? No, not at all. And I mean, it it really started out as a joke. You know, the whole thing is so. I guess imitation is a serious form of flattery. Yeah. There's a show I like called The Game Chasers. They go right. out and chase old video games. Yeah. And me and my buddy John uh -huh. we used to watch that show. We're, we're old retro gamers, and we love that show. And this is right around the time when New Belgium wasn't in Florida yet, and they were coming to Florida. And I joked around. I was like, dude, how funny would that be to do, like, this super serious video about, like, getting super excited about it and, like, running down the stairs and, like, you know, uh, Dukes of Hazarding across the hood of the car into your car and, like, blowing through stop signs and swerving through traffic to hurry up and be the first person to try New Belgium and Florida. Mm -hmm. And the light bulb went off. You know, I was like, wow, wait a second. We'd be kind of like the beer chasers, wouldn't we? You know, and that, yeah. that kind of sparked it. It's like, well, dude, I love filming. It's like, if you want to get on camera with me, let's do it. Yeah. And like you said, it, it has opened up a lot of different doors. And I've tried a lot of beers that I wouldn't have had I not had the show. So, you know, I don't I don't regret doing it. I don't regret starting it. And, uh, you know, yeah. I still enjoy it. Am I, am I frustrated with the viewership at times? Sometimes. But then, you know, I, I nail it sometimes. Sometimes we have those Belgian Quad episodes. They get 2,000 hits. And it's like, holy shit, there is good content. All of my homebrewing does fairly well. You know, two, three, four, five hundred views. Yeah, they do. Yeah, you, you really hit a nail with that one. Yeah, and and to me, the the moniker of success for me is like fifty plus. If I could get fifty plus in the first month, I'd be happy with that. Absolutely, it's a, a little more than one a day. Yeah, that's not yourself. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm still still happy I did it. I have no regrets. You know, again, I've I've learned a lot. I've forced myself to drink beers I wouldn't normally have drank. My palate ha has evolved. I've met a lot of cool people. So, yeah, you know, I've I've got no regrets. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. And I'm going to continue doing it, you know, until I run through the content that I want to do and I can't find any more that I want to do. Yeah. I, would, I don't regret it either, though. It, it's been extremely wearing and tiring oh, yeah. and frustrating. And I mean, it really tests your dedication to what podcasting. Yeah. So right now, my job, you know, I'm, I'm the lead of a new department. So I, I usually work a little bit at home every night, you know, just stuff I couldn't quite finish at the end of the day when the wife and kid go to bed. I've yeah. got an hour or two of free time to do whatever I want. And I spend usually an hour of it doing work. Right. But I was stressed out this week 100% right. because I knew we were going to the Deland Craft Beer Festival. Mm -hmm. So I had to air the footage that we had to air before Deland Craft Festival to air it. But I'd also intended on doing an episode that I wanted to show off my new equipment that I hadn't filmed yet. And I had to find the time for it because if you saw the brew, my new equipment would have been in there. It would have been kind of not ruined, but the, the order of operations wouldn't have worked as well. Right, so right. I wanted to get that aired out first. So I literally spent... Sunday night, all of my free time, getting it ready, rendered, uploaded. Then I spent all of Tuesday getting the other episode ready, you know. So, like, yeah. I've done nothing but podcast work in, in the little bit of free time I've had yeah. all week. And then I came up here Thursday. I'm doing more of it. What a fucking idiot. This would be a lot more fun, though. <laughs> yeah. So, what Jeff. No, this idiot. is just relaxing. I'm um, uh, all right, so. I'm just uh, I'm a special guest here today, man. So, I'm just yeah, chilling, just you know. Chill, dude. Just no, sit down. no work. So you live in the Tampa area, as we just I do. We, we, I would never say I live in Tampa because Tampa is your nearest market. Sorry, not sorry. Tampa's a shithole. Uh, uh, the for, city itself. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> for craft beer, they're the the, the primo. They're nice. Yes, and uh, yeah. I mean, there's the most probably breweries per square mile. The quality's there too. D hit or miss, though. Intermittent. There's a lot. I know of Orlando is a butthole of craft beer for yeah, Florida. That's, if there, if this was a human body, then <laughs> Orlando yes. is the, the butthole. dirty butthole. <laughs> butthole of crap. Red Cypress dirty. looks one like Red Cypress looks side. like it's giving us a chance. Yeah, yeah. and Bo Egan's, Speaking which of we're dirty. going to tomorrow. Yeah, do I like do I get a go one thirty? They're opening up early for us. Ooh, I will. I'm in. How am I gonna leave work in one thirty, bro, dude? Because it's only one thirty. It's only one thirty. There's no happy hour or anything. Well, good. okay, <laughs> we'll we'll get this off. How many how many how many deep are we rolling now? <laughs> Mike said, hey, who wants to hey, the about 1 o'clock? Anyway, so the You're topic the is, chasers. I'm going to get right into it. I'm sidetracking your, you. Your favorite craft breweries in Florida. Before I forget, do I get an honorary membership into Dirty Mike and the Boys? Yes. yes. All right, yeah. cool. <laughs> I, think Je I think Jeff put you in that in like episode five or nice. six. Nice. Well, he mentioned right. you like 20 times. Do I get the tambourine or? No, we don't get nothing. Shit. <laughs> Not uh, yet. 
Sorry, to we're all gonna have a gangbang in this <laughs> Prius. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you want to <I'll>, join? <laughs> as long as I'm, as long as I'm the last man, because that's, <laughs> that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna be in a gangbang, you, you want to be the last guy. So yeah, Dirty Mike and the boys. So what are your favorite uh, crap breweries? <laughs> I'm so distracted now. Crap breweries in Florida. Damn, we're talking about gangbangs. You, you can break it up however you want. All right. You do top ten, top five, man, top three, or um, randomly just name them. It's hard to say, right? Because Persimmon Hollow. I'm gonna give you yes. Per, permis and Hollow. No. <laughs> you know where we're, that's where we're staying at at the land. We're gonna be right, right in front, outside of it. Yeah. Right in front of Persimmon Hollow. And now I need to go. Yeah. Um. So it's a tough question because I'm a hater. I hate just about everything, right? Uh, but <laughs> the, the easy answer, and, and to no surprise to anybody, you know, I think Cigar City. I mean, they've obviously got it locked down. So I don't know if we're talking about not Cigar City. You're talking about local breweries that don't have a lot of distribution that are that I'm might be only in the Tampa area. It doesn't or, matter. However, the breweries you, that you like the most. Again, obviously, obviously, Cigar City. I mean, we talked about it a little earlier. Fart in um, a glass. You know, besides Fart in a glass, there hasn't been a beer there that I've been like, yucky, get it the fuck away from me. Yeah. Um, you know, you might not like the style, but it's well-crafted beer. And that's really what craft beer is about. And I think that's what's missing from a lot of these craft breweries is that it's just not well-crafted. Um, a lot of these guys are coming out with threes. I mean, these are beers that you are in style. Yeah, that's an IPA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a Hefe. But is it worth being in the market for? And something, you know, I keep saying this a million times, something we've already talked about, I guess, right. you know, is that in the, in the land of craft beer now, there are so many breweries. And there's no longer just the one local brewery. We're not just going to go down the street here to my one Winter Springs brewery or my one Castleberry brewery right. or my one Orlando brewery. You're, you're kind of not getting the cool factor anymore of like, hey, those are our local people. Let's go down there and support local because there's five local choices. Yeah. And there's a lot of bad, shitty beer out there. I will, I will derail your question. And I can tell you what the worst beer I've had is in the area. You want to hear that? Absolutely. It's still water or still house. In, in Palm Harbor, very close to my house. I've driven by it a hundred times, and most of their beers were two fives at best. And this is this is the untapped ratings, right? Out of, yeah, out of, five. Out, out of five, you know, okay. overall for the beer, They're these average. are like the two two and two fives. Well, three is average. Three is this this meat style. These are all like below style, thin, watery, not flavorful. I walked out of there tasting their Hefe going, I one hundred percent today could brew a better Hefe. 15 brews in than this brewery does as a professional. Um, and again, I maybe to be a hater, maybe we shouldn't be blasting breweries on here. Oh, that's okay. We um, can do it. Yeah. You know, that that was definitely... Talked about Lops Hops here before. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went in there with the expectation to go meet some people, shake some hands, give out yeah, some cards, and I, right. I drank the beer and, and left. But on the other side of the coin, atmosphere was cool. The bartender was so cool. He's like... Hey, you, got, you want anything else? I'm like, well, you know, I was gonna have the flight. He's like, well, pick one more. I'll give you one more, you know, one more of these little flight glasses, whatever else you want. You know, oh, so cool, you know, yeah. very cool, you know, yeah. and reasonably priced, but you know, the beer was lackluster. Back to your question. Okay. Uh, so again, Cigar City, I think you know, the, the king of the bay for sure. Um, I think a close second would be, you know, Rap Brewing. I think Rap Brewing in Pinellas Park. Um, they have their flagship, the peanut butter chocolate stout, is just out of this world. Heavenly. They, they've nailed it. And surprisingly, too, it's not like a milk stout. It is just a classic it's, stout. Yeah, yeah. Not an oatmeal Most stout. Most people are doing you, porters with that, that. Most people do the chocolate peanut butter porter because it's a little bit sweeter and it plays to those right. t right. tastes. Not as roasty. You get roasty the, stout that way would be Have you nice. Have you had the wrap? I have not. Okay. You should do yeah. it. Yeah. It's, um, it's unbelievable. I haven't had it either. And, and pretty he's, much he's they're, a malt guy, too. They're, they're German-based. They're German-influenced. They have a lot of, like, you know, they'll do a rock beer, a smoke beer, the... They might do an ice box, you know, alt, alt, colch, everything. They're very German focused, which I love German beers, you know. Yeah. Um. So, again, maybe a little partial to the style, but raps really good. I think raps a hidden gem. Yeah. Um. And for Tampa, another great one is Mad Beach. Mad Beach. Shout I, out. I like Mad yeah, Beach. I love Mad Beach. You went? I, no, I said I like it. I yeah. Been. Um. Oh. Great location, great staff, great ownership. I wouldn't say they have any five one hundred percent home runs. They got some beers that are really close. I love their double nut brown ale. I think that's great. Um, uh, the Oscuro, I think it's called. Um, it got real quiet here all of a sudden. Which is like, it was oh, yeah, everyone, everyone's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are we looking at us now? What the hell's going on? I, I like Mad Beach to go off that just because they do like 
crazy things. Like, but yeah, they have, a, they have a 10% coconut cider. They they do weird beers, but it's not yeah. so weird that they're just weird it's weird. Off, you know? It's not off putting. Yeah. Does, does the coconut cider taste like suntan lotion? No. Because I would imagine it would. Ten <laughs> percent, nope. especially. Um, no, but yeah, they've got a, a really sweet, though. really sweet. Enough beers that are over three, nothing under three, and a couple really great ones. Again, great yeah. location. That is just another great right brewery. Right there in uh, Johns Pass. Um, three daughters again, really great. Shout out. Yeah, love three daughters again. Um, I don't think anything was a five out of five, you know, but they had some beers that were really close. You know, everything was within style. Uh, again, great location, great people. Special place in my heart, that brewery. Yeah, I mean, we had a great interview there. They gave us our, our first opportunity to go to brewery, at least for me. Yeah. So, so I mean, those, those would respect. be, I think, the, you know, the three or four. You know, obviously Cigar City, but taking them out because everybody knows they're awesome. The, the little guys that most people don't know about probably Mad Beach, Rap, Three Daughters, I think, or what have it. Um, rounding out the bottom of the list, ones I don't like that I've been to, Stilt House, um, Green Bench in St. Pete. Um, just because your green bench is hoppy and you're not a hop I went guy. there and just every beer was, was hoppy. Their brown yeah. ale was over hop. Their IPAs were super hopped, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and I've heard some stuff about their quality control where they've, they've had an IPA go sour and they just serve it calling it a sour IPA. I'm not trying to spread rumors. That, that could be true or could be not. But, right. um, you know, I've just heard people who are, who are close to them. You yeah. know, that's my opinion that there might be some quality controls there and they don't dump it. You know, that they're just willing to serve it and get through the batch, you know, which isn't always – the right thing uh like red cypress your your episode last week you know those guys were like look we had a batch our second batch or whatever one we had to dump it you know just sometimes you gotta dump it and i could i could commend that you know yeah. it hurts your wallet i'm sure but yeah you uh, going back to my point there's so many local breweries now that if you go into one and the beer's not good you get one shot it's not like well you know i like this these two so let's go try them right. again in a month and try it again and yeah I, i'm i'm more of an atmosphere person but i agree you need to you need to be quality at least beer, threes you yeah. have to be at least hitting or threes on your scale but you have to at least be hitting style and if you don't hit style then you don't i'm not gonna go there i mean i'll drink I'll, i will drink through a list of threes if i like where i'm at yeah. More so yeah. than go to a place that has a couple fours, a handful of fours. And if I don't, if I don't like twos. it, if I don't like it, you know, yeah. but cycle like, brewing. Like, um, for instance, <laughs> like I just went to Angry Chair. Angry Chair from all. I mean, we've talked about them on the show. I finally went to them, and their tap room is cool. Uh, the people were real nice, but it wasn't. It didn't blow me away. It wasn't a place I felt in, insanely comfortable. But I had the German chocolate cupcake stout uh, with maple. Now was it real maple syrup? Complete. Or? I, I, <laughs> I don't. They might have added it in. <laughs> what did it say on the bottle? Yeah, it, it was yeah. an artificial draft. It was, draft. It was draft, but it was um, it was a home run. I mean, it was an unbelievable beer. I've heard great things about that one. Would I go? Would I go back to that brewery to hang out on a normal night? No, and they hit a home run. Like that beer is a home run, and the German chocolate cupcake stout was. They're both side by side on tap. I had them both. They're amazing. They had two great sours on. The beers were there, but would I go back there on a Friday night as a place to go out? I don't know because I didn't necessarily feel comfortable there, and I didn't feel like it was it was an inviting place. Right. So to, for me, I'm atmosphere, but it, were the beers quality? Absolutely. They nailed it. So yeah. that's where I'm at. You have something, Goose? Yeah, uh, up in uh, Jacksonville, it's Brewery Ardwolf. I don't know if you have any. I hear Ardwolf. Yeah, My buddy's no, been trying to get me they up had, there bad. They had the dude, White Russian Imperial Stout at Funky Buddha at uh, Maple Bacon Coffee. Oh, my God. See, all really? the White Russian Imperial Stout, fucking unbelievable. All of their beers are incredible. And their tap room is It's not, it's not my to-go cool. list, for yeah. sure. You, you, my the, buddy the, lives the, up there. He's been yeah, begging me to come be, up. Like, the atmosphere there is great. You can let your dogs in. They all hang out. There's one that, like, chills at the bar all day. It's great. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Goose, any last words? No. Anything you want to say? Anything? No. Any plugs? No. Any plugs? Yeah. You can plug it anywhere? No. no By the time this nothing. airs, Yeah, the I know. That's what I was going to say. I was like, nah. All Come three, to Wob. All three people. <laughs> $5 Burger Mondays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. All right. We'll be, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Costa's Pub and Grill in Melbourne is having a kick-ass Belgian event, Jeff. Ready. That Excited. The, they're the oldest bar in Central Florida. And, and from what I hear, the, the birds have said that's the biggest Belgian event in, in the region, but maybe also in the state. It wouldn't, I wouldn't, that would not surprise me even a little so bit. What, so what's going to happen is March 4th, 5th, and 6th at Coaster's Pub and Grill in Melbourne, they're having a Belgian tap takeover. They're having Belgian chocolate and Belgian cheeses for everyone Ooh. who wants to buy them and try them, can have them. Tickets are free, and we will definitely be there Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. That sounds like an awesome event. 
Oh, absolutely. And I heard, I mean, rare, rare, rare Belgian, absolutely. all limited release. And I know not those, all, but mostly like limited most release. And Bel- yeah. Some Belgians are really hard to get. Oh, yeah. Uh, you no, know, some Bel- to get almost rare all Bel- Belgians are To get hard rare to get. Belgians is, uh, is uh, quite the feat. So oh. definitely come out. Me and Jeff will be there saying hi and everybody and mingling and getting drunk with you guys. Yeah, well, it'll be easy to do at a Belgian event. So, yeah. So come by Coasters Pub and Grill in Melbourne, March 4th, 5th, and 6th. We, we will be there that Saturday. So I believe that is the 5th. Yeah, yeah it's the 5th. I think it's so. It's the 5th. Yeah. So be there. Look for us. We'll be with Dave, the owner. Come say hi, and we'll uh, we'll have a good time. 